Okay, today we're going to talk about Plato's police state. What do you mean by that? Plato's police state. What is that? Well, years ago I read a book by Plato called The Republic. It's a classic, people say. Plato lived 427 to 347 BC, according to this. So that's over 2,000 years ago. And Plato wrote this book called The Republic. And in this book, he starts out by talking about, wouldn't it be cool to hide somebody all their life from birth in a cave and manipulate their reality and, 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 and rule over them and control them in a certain way? And I'm thinking, no, no, that, that, that wouldn't be cool. That, that's, that's awful. But yet, this book talks about some certain things that just sound horrible. But as we look around us in the world today, we see a, a world in which people want to set up a police state. And they want to take us as slaves and enslave us and manipulate us and teach us certain things to manipulate our reality and make us think a certain way. And not let us have the free will to know right from wrong and to do right. So, even though this is a, an old classical book, it's also a pretty evil book. There's some pretty evil stuff in it. But also, there's some interesting things in it about politics. And by the way, if you take the word Plato's Republic, we have the book is called in English Plato's Republic. Well, what is the actual word in Greek? The actual word in Greek is politeia. Oops. Politeia, from which we get the word politics. So this is the actual Greek word, and the actual word for city in Greek is polis, which sounds exactly like polis. So, interestingly enough, a polis is a city-state in the Old Greek, which is actually a police state. So it's interesting that what the devil is setting up in the world today in his new world order is a police state. It's a state in which he wants to take you and put you in darkness and manipulate you so that you're not able to reach your full potential and that all you do is obey and do what you're told. And as a Christian, we know that the Bible says that eventually that Satan will have his way and he'll give people a mark in which they have to take a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. But thankfully the Bible teaches that the Lord Jesus Christ is greater than Satan and he will return one day at the Battle of Armageddon and kick out the devil and will get rid of all that evil. But what do you mean by Plato's police state? What is that talking about? Well, let's look at a little bit about the things that Plato set up because Plato set up what's an interesting uh, what he calls a, a, a circle of, of, of things that happen over and over and over again in political city-states. In other words, they start a certain way, and then it goes downhill to another way, and then it sets up this way, and then it starts all over again. What do you mean? Well, he said that the way that, that uh, the governments take over is they start out as timiarchies, timor, timocracies, democracy. <laughs> Hard, these little words that they use, democracy. Oligarchy. Oligarchy or oligarchy, however you want to say it. Then he says it turns into a democracy. And then he says it turns into a tyranny. So Plato says that the cycle, that's the word I guess I'm using and looking for, the cycle of governments is the same. All governments begin as timiarchies or democracies. They turn into oligarchies which then turn into democracies, which then downgrade and turn into tyranny. And once a tyranny has taken in and come to pass, the people get so tired of a tyrant, they raise up against him and dispose him, and they start a timiarchy again. So what do these mean? What is a democracy? What is an oligarchy? What is a democracy? What is a tyranny? Well, I'm looking online and I'm reading it. It says a timocracy, or a democracy, however you say the word, is defined as a government of people who love rule and honor. So it's like a moral republic. I like to call it a republic. You see, a republic is laws govern. Republic. Repub Let me make sure I spell it right. In a republic, laws govern. And most republics usually are ruled by moral men. You, it's very hard to have an immoral republic because when a a republic becomes immoral, it turns into a democracy, which leads directly to a tyrant. A tyrant, by the way, is a dictator. Or, another term is a despot, which is another, another interesting term for a, for a dictator. So, a democracy. He argues, Socrates argues, that the democracy emerges from an aristocracy, 
aristocracy, all these big words. Due to civil war breaking out among the ruling classes, over time, many more births will occur to people who lack aristocratic guardian quality, slowly drawing the populace away from knowledge, music, poetry, guardian education, toward money making and acquisition of possessions. A civil war between those who value wisdom and those who value material acquisition will be a struggle until a just medium is compromised. The democracy values war insofar as it satisfies the love of victory and honor. The democratic man loves training, hunting, values, etc. So he says that this republic or this democracy always degenerates and turns into materialism. And because people become materialistic, this form of government always will turn into an oligarchy. What is an oligarchy? Well, according to this, Socrates suggests that wealth will not help a pilot to navigate a ship. And rather than seeking out wisdom and honor, they, they look toward increasing their wealth by whatever means they can. The injustice of economic disparity divides the rich and poor, thus creating an economic environment, excuse me, not economic, an environment for criminals and beggars to emerge in which the rich are constantly plotting against the poor and vice versa. The oligarchic constitution is based on property assessment and wealth qualification. Unlike the democracy, oligarchs are also able to fight war since they do not, are also unable to fight war since they do not wish to arm the majority for fear of their rising up against them. Even more so fearing the majority than their enemies. Nor do they seem to pay mercenaries since they are reluctant to spend money. So the ol oligarchy is a ruling class of small individuals in which they get so rich that they have to war against the poor who want to come over and steal what they have. In other words, by immoral means, they become richer and the poor become poorer. You see, when you have a republic, people can work together and you can have a strong middle class. There might be rich people, there might be poor, because there will always be poor. But there will always be laws that help the, the middle class to work and get ahead. But once that degenerates and the morals are gone, an immoral ruling class rises in power and makes them seek to make war upon the poor. And that will always lead to them changing the laws in their favor. We're seeing that in America today, where the rich lobbyists are getting the laws in their favor, so they get more of the money, and the poor get poorer, and the rich get richer. What happens? Well, then, according to Plato, it becomes a democracy. And I'm reading here from a Wikipedia about Plato's Republic, and it says democracy. It says, as this socioeconomic divide grows, so do tensions between social classes. From the conf conflicts arising out of such tensions, the poor majority overthrow the wealthy minority, and democracy replaces the oligarchy preceding it. The poor overthrow the oligarchs and grant liberties and freedoms to citizens, creating the most variegated collection of peoples under a supermarket of constitutions. A visually appealing demagogue is soon lifted up to protect the interests of the lower class. However, they, with too much freedom, no requirements for anyone to rule and having no interest in, ex in assessing the background of their rulers other than honoring such people because they wish the majority well, the people become easily persuaded by such a demagogue's appeal to try and satisfy people's common base and unnecessary pleasures. In other words, a democracy is mob rule. These poor people rise up and they rise up and they set someone in, in, in place over them, but they don't check on that person to see if that person is moral. They don't find out if that person is, is really the best one to rule over the republic. And what do they do? I guess you could say they don't check the person's birth certificate to see if they're really born in America. Hmm. And so this mob rule takes over and they allow one person to take over and rule over them. And usually that one person is the worst of the bunch. And what happens to that one person who the mob have gone against the laws and they set up a one person to rule over them? And that one person says, well, oh, I promise you everything. And he gets in power and he gives them nothing. What happens? That person usually becomes a dictator, a tyrant. The excessive freedoms granted to the citizens of a democracy ultimately leads to a tyranny, the furthest regress type of government. These freedoms divide the people into three socioeconomic classes, the dominating class, the elites, and the commoners. Tensions between the dominating class and the elites cause the commoners to seek out protection of their democratic liberties. 
They invest all their power in their de democratic demagogue, who in turn becomes corrupted by the power and becomes a tyrant with a small entourage of supporters for protection and absolute control of his people. So Plato, 2000, over 2,000 years ago, saw this. And you know what's interesting is how this has played throughout history over and over and over. It's played out just as he said. They start as a republic. It slowly goes down into a moral ruling class turns into mob rule, and turns into a dictatorship. And as we look at the Bible, and see, I'm a Christian, so I believe the Bible. Back in the Old Testament, we have Israel. And the Bible calls Israel a commonwealth. You go to Webster's 1828 Dictionary, and a commonwealth is a republic. In a republic, laws govern, and of course, we know God gave the Ten Commandments. And there was more than just Ten Commandments. But... Israel started out as a republic, the republic of Israel. They were God's chosen people, according to the Bible. And what happened? They went into apostasy. They became immoral. They began to do wrong things. We have the book of Judges, where the, every man did that which is right in his own eyes. And what happened? They went into a dictatorship, in which Babylon came in and took them over. And they were under the thumb of Babylon. And then we see a little later, about 500 B.C., as a matter of fact, we have the Medes and the Persians. And obviously the Medes and the Persians started out as a republic. Because in the book of Daniel it says, Daniel 6.8, Daniel 6.12, Daniel 6.15. You can look them up. It says the, the, the law of the Medes and Persians, which cannot be altered. A system of government in which people are under a law that cannot be altered is a republic. So we see from the beginning of history, it starts out as a republic. It descends into oligarchy and democracy and tyranny. Then they rise up against the tyrant and they start again as a, a republic. And then it descends into oligarchy, democracy, tyranny. Then they rise up and shuffle off that evil dictator and start a republic again, which laws rule. Over here we have uh, 300 years before Jesus, Plato. And in his day and age he lived in Greece. And they had a republic in Greece. But Greece slowly went into this same cycle and ended up with a tyrant, Alexander the Great. Then his kingdom went into four different rulers and went down again. Uh, eventually Rome took power. And we know Rome, if you've ever seen the movie, um, the, uh, what is it called, The Gladiator. In that movie, The Gladiator, the man that played Caesar says, I want to take Rome back to its former glory. I want it to be a republic. Why? Because it had descended down in a downward spiral into a democracy. And what happened? The Caesar's son murdered him in cold blood and became a tyrant. You see, when, when you're no longer a public and you're a democracy, you are one step away from tyranny. That's one step away from an ultimate ty tyrannical dictator. What happens? Well, later, throughout history, we see Jesus shows up. And he dies. He's God manifest in the flesh. Later throughout history, we see, we see the French Revolution. We see France. France went through so many different republics. They only lasted a couple years each. And then they went down and down. And a dictator. And then they started a republic again. Old Napoleon shows up. And Napoleon got tired of it. And Napoleon just marched right in and took over the corrupt government and said, Look, I'm the dictator. I'm starting over. And so all throughout history, we see this cycle of starting out as a republic, as a democracy, moral laws governing. But through materialistic means, people want more and more and more, and they see the power, and they say, hey, I'm going to use this power to make myself rich. And they become immoral, and they persecute the poor. And then the poor rise against them. And then as soon as they do, the poor vote for some evil man to rule over them, who becomes their dictator or their tyrant. So all throughout history we see this happening over and over and over again. What about today? Well, here we are out here today, and there's a government that claims to be a legitimate government called the United Nations. They have a goal. Their goal is a new world order to bring in a global governance over the entire world. But are they a republic? Is it the republic of the United Nations? No. It's the democracy of the United Nations. Which means it's one step away from a worldwide satanic dictator, which the Bible calls the Antichrist. So very soon, should the Lord tarry, 
There will be one man who takes over the entire world, who followed this system that Plato showed us back over 2,000 years ago, and has played out throughout history as a cycle over and over and over again. But thankfully, we know who's going to wipe out this tyrant whenever the rapture takes place. The Bible teaches that then the Antichrist comes in, and once the Antichrist takes over, he rules for only seven years in the tribulation, the Bible calls it. Then God himself comes back at the battle of Armageddon and sets up his kingdom on earth for a thousand years. The thousand year millennial reign. So if you're a Christian, you should know what's coming in the future. If you are a Christian and you have a Bible, you know beyond a shadow of a doubt, hey, I know the way that it's headed, I know where we're descending into, but thank God I know that there's going to be a king that's going to come back. He's going to wipe out all of this. and He's going to set himself up not as a tyrant, but as a righteous ruler. You see, these are all nice uh, forms of government for men to rule themselves, but there's one form of government that's better than any form any ever made. And that's a one-man ruler who is sinless, who can do no wrong. The old saying is, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Well, what if a man can't be corrupted? And what if he's the ruler? Well, the Bible says that someday Jesus will come back and he's without sin. And he's going to rule as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, he's going to rule righteously. He'll never be corrupted and this cycle will stop. And we'll be back under a republic where he says these are the laws, but yet he governs. And we'll never see that cycle continue anymore. So that's pretty much Plato's police state. Where are we in history? We're about right here at the end, about to see that tyrant take over the entire world, that tyrant who is a dictator and a despot. Uh, a lady named Ann Coulter wrote a really good book called Demonic, and I mentioned this in another video that I made a little while ago on the difference between a republic and a democracy. And her book shows what a democracy is and how a democracy is mob rule. And when democracies take over, the first thing they do is start murdering people. And out of that murderous horde of mobs running around killing, like in the French Revolution, one of the worst comes up as the tyrant. Who will that be? The Antichrist? But thank God, he'll be kicked out, and Jesus Christ will come and reign. So the question is, are you a Christian? If you're not, you should be. You need to come to Jesus Christ and trust him as your Savior. He died for you, he shed his blood, he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. If you'll trust him and trust his shed blood, what he's done for you, you can be saved and you can be out of here and be in heaven with him. If you don't, you're going to be stuck in this time period where you're going to have to take a mark. And unless you take the mark of that beast, you're going to die. I'd hate to be there. I'm glad that I know the Bible. I'm glad that I have a book. King James Bible that tells me history. Thank you, Mr. Plato, for telling me how the governments work in cycles. So I know what the ultimate end is, but I knew that with the Bible. I didn't need you, Plato. But it is interesting to see how he put it down in stone that there's the cycle. Where are we today in that cycle? In the United States of America, we're no longer a republic. We're no longer an oligarchy. We're descended down into a democracy. All the past presidents, for as long as I've been alive, 40 years, have said, this great democracy of the United States of America. And yet I go back and look at the older presidents and they say, this great republic. We have changed from a republic to a democracy. We are one step away from a tyranny. So it's time that you see where we are. And the only hope and the only redemption is looking up. Because Jesus is your only hope. Thank you for watching this video. Have a good day.